Now then, today there's been another hotfix going over some changes to Flak and Moe's, like you've seen in the title, and some just more miscellaneous stuff this time, nothing as major as the patch that we had last week, but still some fairly important stuff that I wanted to go over, as well as some bits of news that I did want to highlight, including Zane being absolutely broken, and talking about the event a little bit too that's going on currently. This should be live in 5 hours, so again we can't do the whole before and after thing, which is kind of frustrating, but let's start with Moe's. The means of destruction now has a re-trigger delay of 2 seconds. This is the Demolition Woman talent. Whenever Moz deals splash damage, there is a chance to add ammo to her currently equipped weapon magazine with a smaller chance to return a grenade. Putting too many points in this and augmenting it in a certain way means that you could effectively run around not even getting close to running out of grenades. They haven't completely gutted it, they've just added a re-trigger delay of 2 seconds, meaning that it spans it out a little bit, but this is what Gearbox said. Infinite grenades is not an intentional build for Moz, even if it is hilarious. To lower the power and spam of this build, a re-trigger delay has been added to the grenade portion of Means of Destruction. The rest of it is fine. But I wanted to highlight this first as I feel like lots of people can turn around and go, oh, Moe's really got nerfed by this. Really isn't that much of an issue, I don't think. Makes it a little bit weaker, but I do want to try it out, see how much weaker it is. But from the looks of it, not a huge change. Just weakens that build a little bit more. Might be more impactful than it looks, but I did want to break it down very quickly. But Flak got a buff. We'll go over the changes before we go over what Gearbox said. The Rack Attack status effect chance has been increased by 100%. It normally comes in incendiary damage, but you can change it to Cryo. Barbaric Yorp increases the power of pet bonuses granted to Flak. This can be capped out at 100%, but now it's been increased by another 100%, meaning that you get 200% increases. Now this, this could be really strong and make for some really interesting builds. But again, we really need to get our hands on it to really decide whether it's any good. Some other quality of life stuff that's in here, pets no longer push around players, and the touch pet prompt is now a lower priority and should no longer interfere with looting or vending machines. There is one nerf in here that you've probably spotted. Leave No Trace now has a re-trigger delay of two seconds. When Flax scores critical hit, there is a chance for one ammo to be added to their magazine. And this is what Gearbox said about it. Rack attack is great for constant damage output, especially when paired with anointed gear. The base skill seems to be lacking, so rack attack now has a guaranteed status effect on on any enemy that it damages. Leave No Trace was returning much more ammo than intended, and we have added a re-trigger delay to keep its ammo return within expectation. Barbaric Yorp has an increased bonus as we didn't feel like the amount of investment had an equal payoff. In addition, we felt the Flax pets were demanding too much attention, which was interfering with players trying to stand still for any length of time. So we disabled the ability for them to move you around. If they can nerf the amount of times that the Jabba just starts wailing and shouting whilst you're AFK, I'd also appreciate that too, Gearbox. Whether this makes the other aspects of Flak a little bit stronger remains to be seen. It seems to be that the whole fadeaway build seems to be the main area of strength, but I like the fact that they're buffing it ever so slightly. They're not just completely going crazy with these changes. Increasing the damage on Rack Attack might bring it up a little bit, and also the payoff to having pets may make it a bit stronger. With any luck, it gives Flak players incentive to play and try this out a little bit more, but we'll have to really see what these changes mean for the character throughout the week. They're the main changes to the Vault Hunters, but there are some general fixes and improvements that I certainly wanted to highlight. The first thing is that the Holopod Guardian rank, which does explosive damage when you hit or kill a target, it no longer damages allies, but it still could damage you, so be very careful of that. It's been re-enabled, so you can use it again. There's some general bug fixes, but it's also addressed a reported issue where some players' inventories would be not saved in their bank. So I assume that this is the whole bank being absolutely cleaned out problem that I and a few other people have run into. Hard to really say if that's what it is it's a bit vague but fingers crossed that's the case because i'm sick of making mule characters to put all of my gear on for miscellaneous stuff gigamind katagawa ball ability anointed have had a few adjustments these three boss fights had concerns with their health and shields that made the combat loops more difficult than we intended. Gigamind had a little bit too much health, so that was slightly reduced. Katagawa Ball will no longer regenerate its shields. We found that players contended with the ads during the fight that Katagawa would start regenerating shields, negating the player's progress. Finally, Billy has 25% of his health removed. We agree that this fight often dragged on needlessly. We will be monitoring each of these bosses and may make further adjustments in the future. I haven't really had a problem with any of these bosses, to be honest. They're all 
all a bit of a pain in the ass, but none of them are realistically that hard, so quite surprised that they've decided to nerf it. Some of the general stuff will go through them fairly quickly. Bloated racks no longer spawn so many rackle snakes. These aren't the really strong racks that are in the Cistern of Slaughter, but I mean, if it makes it a little bit less of a pain in the ass to do, then I'm all for it. Adjusted cooldown values when they are displayed for Zane's skills. Bit of an interesting one thrown in there, but I don't think it amounts to much. Amara's Glamour, which is when you use an action skill and you hit an enemy, it can confuse them and have them attack enemies. It will now turn enemies on each other as described in the action skill. I guess it didn't do that. They modified the loot spawn of the Sierra of Supremacy in the Proving Grounds. The Emperors would dig under the ground, the Spider Ants, and would get stuck there, which would stop progress in Proving Grounds, so that's been fixed. Lavender Crawley's physics were adjusted to prevent them exiting the world like a pop balloon. Nice. And some other bits and pieces that you've seen on screen, nothing too stand out. It's not surprising that the patch after last week isn't as exciting as the one last week. You know, we had a lot of changes in that last one. So this is more general upkeep, but like Borderlands and Gearbox say in these actual patch notes, their goal was to make sure that all three action skills for each of the Vault Hunters are viable, but we noticed some skills are outperforming others. To encourage more build diversity, we made some adjustments to Flack and Moe's this week. Zane and Amara don't really have that problem, in fact they're fairly balanced in that regard. Flack it just seems to be fade away or bust, you don't tend to use Rack Attack or the Gamma Burst ability all that much. I do really like the Gamma Burst ability, but when it comes to actual strength and impact, it doesn't really come close. Moe's doesn't really have that problem because she always has the Iron Bear mech, but they really need to buff the Iron Bear mech at some point. I think if you're a Moe's player and you're seeing elements of the only really strong build that you have being nerfed, you want to see some other areas being buffed at the same time, right? Kind of like Flak in that case. But yeah, the Flak buff is pretty nice. It's some general stuff and it may incentivize you to play other areas. I do hope so. But this patch is fairly tame. I didn't want to sort of ramble on for too long just about this patch. It speaks for itself, I feel, but I did want to raise something pretty interesting about Zane, and that's the fact that the majority of his skills don't work, or at least don't work as advertised. This is something I'm going to do a full video on soon. I need to get around to it. I only got back from the US yesterday, so have a lot of catching up to do. But this was a post that came out of Infogreen, and it's fairly lengthy, where he goes over each of Zane's skills, and he augments, tests them out, and like he says, none of them work as advertised. We'll go for it. Double barrel does not increase your damage after a switch as advertised. This is his capstone, where the clone that you have running has a copy of Zane's current weapon when activated, but you also should get 20% gun damage and you don't. The Digiclone, however, does. So there's one big problem, and that's his capstone as well. That's such a big nerf to him that maybe Gearbox didn't realise. Shadowfroid doesn't restore shields as advertised. This is whenever a clone takes damage, you gain shield for a portion of that damage. Doesn't work. And Infra said that it might not actually do anything at all. So this augment is just completely useless for the time being. We need to test it a little bit more though. Boom Enhanced doesn't provide as much health as advertised. It's meant to have 81% per grenade, but apparently it is a lot less. Distributed Denial, the other capstone that Zane has, where your barrier gains the effect of your current equipped shield mod. Additionally, shield effects are applied to allies near the barrier. Bonuses to Zane are reduced. Apparently, this just doesn't work at all, with any of the unique effects that some legendary shields or artifacts may have, or any anointed effects. It doesn't do anything for you or your team. Another capstone that just does not work. The doppelbanger augment works as intended though. I know because I use it a lot, so that's good at least. The digital distribution augment when Zane takes health damage and the clone is active, a portion of that damage is shared to the clone instead. Unlike advertised, the augment shares less damage to the digi clone the lower the health it has, and it even does damage to the digi clone's red health, even though it has shields available. Confident competence, which is a mid skill in undercover, where it increases your gun damage and accuracy when you have four shields, up to 20% gun damage, but it only increases your gun damage damage by 10. For Futility Belt, another talent, Zane gains resistance to non-elemental damage. After killing an enemy, all elemental damage Zane takes is converted to non-elemental damage. This one's a bit confusing, I don't necessarily understand the writing myself, but I'll just read it out. It doesn't grant the 12% damage listed to a fire damage sniper that was converted to non-elemental via kill skill. It does, however, make said sniper do more damage to the shield by removing the wrong elemental penalty, but it does stop the dot, so you end up taking more damage because of this. I believe is what I'm reading. The retaliation augment, when you're near the barrier, your gun damage is increased when the barrier takes damage by 10%. It doesn't work when you're holding the barrier. It only works when it's down on the ground. And it's the same with the charge three layer one. When you're near the barrier, your movement speed and reload speed is increased. Does it also work if you're holding it? 
Violent momentum. Sane's gun damage is increased while moving. The quicker you move, the greater the gun damage bonus. According to somebody else who in for green didn't credit, this doesn't double your damage bonus when you double the movement speed at a one-to-one -one ratio. After normal move speed, move speed bonuses increase violent momentum's efficiency by 80% the bonus applied. So it's meant to be a lot stronger than it is. And finally, bad dose, the radiation augment for the sentinel, leaves a radiation dot that is locked at two and does not scale from level 10 to 50. But it should be about 20 times stronger. And apparently you may not be getting the buffs at all. The buffs being increased fire rate and movement speed. That is a lot of stuff for Zane that just flat out doesn't work. Like I said, we really need to sort of do a video showing off gameplay of each of these and showing how they don't work, but I'll get around to it. I just wanted to get that information out there because I know a lot of Zane players watch me because I seem to represent you guys, which I'm perfectly fine with, but this is big. This is one of those things that I just want to be like, Gearbox, hey, one of the more popular Vault Hunters flat out doesn't work and people are thinking he's not very good, he's not very strong. This is stuff that you've clearly missed. But there's some pretty big stuff in there that I hope Gearbox spot and with any luck this time next week they managed to patch it out. Finally I wanted to talk about the boss event that's going on at the moment. I haven't highlighted it on the channel because I was traveling as it went out which is typical where over the next five weeks we're going to be having interesting events. Over the next five weeks we're going to have anniversary celebrations to celebrate 10 years since Borderlands 1. For this week from October the 1st to the 7th we will be getting bonus boss loot. We'll come back to this. Next week we'll have rare spawn hunt which will be similar no doubt with rare mobs having unique legendaries. Show me the Iridium, which doesn't sound all that exciting, I'll be honest. Mayhem on Twitch. This could be cool, but again, not too sure what that includes. And a spooky surprise, which is no doubt when the Halloween event, the Bloody Harvest, will be available to play at the end of October. Maybe a little bit earlier. This is all well and good. Interesting news, but I did spot a couple of places, Kotaku and Fobs, with Paul Tassi notably, that basically say that this event isn't worth your time, and I kind of agree. But there was something that Paul Tassi said on the Fobs thing, which I 100% agree with. You would not know that this event was live if you didn't read about it. There will be people that don't keep up with the news, that don't follow Gearbox on Twitter, that won't know that there's an event going on in-game that increases certain legendaries dropping from bosses. It's just not noticeable, like, at all. Not only that, those legendaries that we've gone over, stuff like the Gatling Gun or Mouthpiece, don't drop more in a noticeable sense. It feels like they could just be world drops, if I'm honest. So, like, this is one thing that I'm a bit worried about with Gearbox going into this, like, games as a service area. No matter what they want to describe themselves as, they don't want to be always online, that's fair enough. But if they want to keep updating the game and having these events going on, that's all well and cool. But you need to make sure that these events are pretty good. Otherwise, you sort of run into a lot of issues that Anthem ran into. And I wouldn't necessarily say that there's much difference between the games and how they've worked post-launch. Obviously, Borderlands 3 is a much better game and has come out in a much better fashion than Anthem, but when you nerf loot drop rates and when these events come out fairly lackluster, you've got to be very careful. And especially going into events next week, going over rare mobs, which is no doubt the exact same thing, and then the Iridium event. The only way that I can see that being exciting is if it increases your Iridium drop rate by a lot, but also adds in new cosmetics that you can get from Earl or new anointed gear that's really good. You get the idea. It has to be noticeable. Otherwise, what is the point of doing an event? That's just some criticism. I don't know if you guys agree, but with that said, tomorrow we should have a video going out talking about all of the legendary drops and whether you should farm any of the bosses in order to get them. Long story short, fight Killer Vault, fight Grave Ward. But that's all of the news that I wanted to go over today. Quite a few bits and pieces. I kind of wanted to do a longer video because I've missed a lot of news and just wanted to do it in one uh, big chunk. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you very soon.